I'm still Mr. Slav, and it's in my nature to rank stuff. Let's rank this one in mushrooms. More mushrooms equals to Vierder Mass Hysteria. It's all based on my opinion. In 1803, many people claimed to be attacked by a white ghost in London. And of course, as some people started this rumor, more people wanted to be included and started spreading even further, creating uh, mass hysteria. It is said that some people were so frightened that they even died from shock. So what do you do when your city is being terrorized by a ghost? You hunt it. One guy, Francis Smith, was patrolling the area with a shotgun. Late evening, he saw the ghost, aimed and shot it, and uh, he successfully killed it. But wait, that was no ghost, it was actually a bricklayer, Thomas Millwood. The guy was actually a human. Shooter made a mistake because the bricklayer was wearing very white and clean clothes. He was being scooby dooed into a ghost. Sometimes being dirty is not that bad. Once again, a strange mass hysteria happened in London. There is this folklore character called Spring Hilled Jack. It's basically OG Batman, but also evil. He could do amazing jumps, he had skin tight clothes, claws, helmet, and had glowing eyes. By the way, when I was previously talking about the dead ghost, I didn't mention that there were more various ghost mass sightings in London. So it is speculated that Spring Hill Jack may have been born out of these stories. Anyway, this Jack guy was first seen in 1837 by a girl which allegedly was grabbed by him, kissed and her clothes were ripped. Thankfully she screamed and the mysterious monster quickly fled the scene. Next, this Jack appeared in front of carriage which naturally frightened the horses and caused the crash. He then jumped over 2.7 meters or 9 feet high wall and disappeared. There were many more stories which usually involve various female teenagers and women being assaulted by this villain. All these sightings continued for more than 30 years. Skeptics think that this was a combination of pranksters, mass hysteria, real attacks by criminals and sensationalist publications. This one is rather strangely specific mass hysteria that happened in USA in 1950s. People started noticing their car windshields being damaged as if they were being attacked by some sort of antagonist from Jojo Bizarre Adventures. The damage was called windshield pitting which can be caused by a small hard abrasive particles like sand, dust and pebbles. So during 1950s a mass hysteria broke out because people started noticing that their windows were being damaged. At first people thought uh, that vandals were at work maybe shooting BB guns. But later some even weirder theories started surfacing such as atom bomb testing, cosmic rays, radio waves by radio station and the weirdest of them, sand flea eggs. More than 3000 damaged windshields were reported and finally government investigated and found out that mostly 5% cases may have been caused by vandalism and other cases were just a mass delusion. It is believed that even though damage of windshields was happening constantly, media pointing out such thing caused people to notice it and uh, at the same time creating a mass hysteria. In 1962 a strange disease appeared in a dressmaking department. Women who worked there started vomiting, feeling numb and had dizziness. Not just few people were afflicted, but more than 60 workers started having similar symptoms. Someone had an idea to spread the world that the mysterious beetle or a bug was roaming in the premises, biting people and infecting them with a disease. When experts arrived, they concluded that this might have been a mass hysteria. Maybe few workers did get bitten by some sort of bugs like for example flea, but such rumors spread like wildfire and made other people have anxiety attacks which conveniently create similar symptoms. When bugs bite, they usually leave evidence such as swelling in the bit area. Most of 60 people who got into mass hysteria did so after the media published an article. 
In 1789, when Napoleon was taking control of France, French peasants were in a tough situation. Swiftly, changing political landscape brings anxiety and fear into people, which what precisely happened? Rumors of famine plot were starting to spread around. What is this plot? Well, allegedly it was a conspiracy theory that aristocrats were trying to control grain and food. Not only that, but due to various natural disasters in 1788, produced a small amount of grain, thus almost creating a famine. One of those nature disasters were the spread of ergot grain fungus, which can create hallucinations. Anyway, fears of political unrest, bad food harvest, came to a collective mass hysteria, which made peasants grab various tools and went to raid the rich people. Speaking of raids, I have to talk about raid shadow. Le nah, just kidding. Anyway, peasants pillaged, stole, and burned countless of homes. I don't want to justify their actions, but uh, being peasant at the time, or any time at all, wasn't very fun. Anyway, the great fear ended the same year when people realized that they had more than enough grain in the storage. It all started happening 500 years ago, when one nun in Germany for no reason started biting other nuns. Not long after, those nuns, which were bitten, started doing the same, spreading their weird mass hysteria to other sisters. This thing started spreading uncontrollably throughout the great part of Saxony, part of Germany. Apparently, the biting even reached Rome. Sadly, this event happened many years ago, so these documents doesn't provide much information. But this is not the only strange instance when a nun started acting strangely. Also many hundreds of years ago, one nun started meowing like a cat. After some time, other nuns picked up the habit and the whole monastery was sounding like the ranged cat nursery. Since cats were seen as evil by priests, they called upon soldiers to beat the evil out of meowing nuns. Unsurprisingly, this was effective and nuns stopped doing that. Back when people didn't have TV sets, they listened to radio. It was a window to information, news, music and entertainment. In 1938, during Halloween, Orson Welles read a story on radio, a fictional story, mind you, called The War of the Worlds, which is a story about aliens invading our Earth. For some reason, instead of reading it as a story, radio hosts decided to present the story as news, which were interrupting usual radio programming. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special bulletin from the Intercontinental Radio News. At 20 minutes before 8 central time, Professor Farrell of the Mount Jennings Observatory, Chicago, Illinois, reports observing several explosions of incandescent gas occurring at regular intervals on the planet Mars. The spectroscope indicates the gas to be hydrogen and moving toward the... This fake news started with explosions on Mars, then uh, an unknown object falling on a farm, then monsters which incinerate people with a heat ray. Well, this was enough to convince some of the listeners that the events actually were happening. People were calling local newspaper or police to see if the story was real. Those who got calls described frightened callers crying and screaming, asking whether the bodies were near the operators, begging us to get connections to their families before the world came to an end. However, the extent of mass hysteria was not as big as newspapers later told. The radio show with War of the World story wasn't very popular, so not many had turned into this scary broadcast. Have you heard of dancing plague which happened in 1518? It apparently happened in France region during Holy Roman Empire. It all began in July when one woman started enthusiastically dancing in the street. She kept the dancing for a week, which makes me have some questions. Did she take breaks to drink, eat or go to the toilet? I hope she did. Anyway, the weird woman kept the dancing and soon others joined in. It is said that more than 400 people joined the dance. Later some started collapsing out of fatigue and some allegedly started dying due to stroke and heart failure. Fun enough, to remedy the problem, 
government at the time prescribed bands of musicians to help dancers dance themselves free of it. However, they were just pouring gasoline into the fire. Musicians didn't help like at all. People kept dancing for more than a month until finally dancing died off. Interestingly, there were more dancing manias during medieval times, for example, in 1020, 1237, 1373, 1374, 1375, 1376, 1381, 1418, 1551 and more. What can I say, people like to dance. When you think about it, witch trials were pretty crazy. Not only crazy, but this shit lasted for more than 250 years. Witch hunts were especially prevalent during 15th and 16th centuries when 40,000 people were killed. I'm surprised that people from that dancing gig I just talked about didn't arouse any suspicion. So what does witch trials have to do with mass hysteria? Well, everything. By definition, mass hysteria is a phenomenon that transmits collective illusions of threats. Whenever real or imaginary, throughout a population and society as a result of rumors and fear. Witchcraft as we know doesn't really exist. I mean, I wish it was real, I could look young again and deadlift as much as I used to. Let's not forget Salem witch trials that happened in 1692 America when two teenage girls started accusing people of witchcraft. And thanks to gullible villagers' mass hysteria and inability to reason, more than 200 people were tried and 20 were found to be guilty. Still not as mass hysterical as Apple fans during new product launch.